Hello guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to use persistent data storage from the Spigot API. If you don't know what the persistent data storage API is, it allows you to store any primitives or other data types using abstraction inside of Minecraft's NBT data. If what I said to you sounded like crazy talk, let me show you what that means. We're not going to be storing other data types, but we will store primitive data types. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the player's money that they have inside of their NBT data. So to do this, first we need to get an instance of the player, which I have done here. And then if the arc's length is equal to zero, then I want to send the player their money. So to do this, I have to first get the player's persistent data storage. So to do this, I can make a variable for it. I can do persistent data container, and I'm just going to name this data. And we can set it to player dot get persistent data container. Now what this is going to allow us to do is access a whole bunch of values. We can see the three main ones here that we're going to use is set, get, or has, or possibly even get or default. Whenever they don't type in any arguments, I just want to have them get this data type. This method takes two things. The first is the namespace key, and the second is the persistent data type. Now, we can go ahead and make a variable for our namespace key here. And if you don't know what a namespace key is, it's basically, um, it's the key for a key value pair, but it also carries an instance in with it, if that makes sense. And the instance is going to be our plugin. So we're just going to name this namespace key. And we can go ahead and create a new instance of a namespace key. And we can pass in our, our plugin. And the name, the actual key itself. And we're going to name this money. Now we can go ahead and use that namespace key right here. And then we can also put our persistent data type. And this is going to be a double because we want to be able to store cents as well. And I can go ahead and make this a variable. We can name this balance. And then we can go ahead and send it to the player. All right, now we can go ahead and use this namespace key and do the same exact thing. And I'm going to go ahead and move this out of this if statement so I can use it for these ones down here as well. So we're going to do basically the same thing except use a different method to add and remove money from the player's account. So I'm going to go ahead and get the amount that the player typed in using this handy method in the double class. That is not what I meant to do. All right. <laughs> And I can go ahead and actually move this up here because I'm going to need the player's balance to deposit and withdraw. So I can go ahead and use the same variable there. And I can go ahead and set the balance to what the player added to it. And then to set the data, all we have to do is type in data.set, pass in our namespace key, pass in the persistent data type, and then pass in what we want to be the value. In this case it will be our balance. And then down here we're going to do basically the same thing except remove it from our balance. And we also want to make sure before we do any of this we want to make sure that the player actually has this value set. So we can check if data has pass in our namespace key persistent data type again and we want to get the opposite of this value and we can go ahead and set it to zero. That's all the code done. I'll see you guys in the game. All right, and now I'm in the game and if I do slash money, you can see I have zero dollars and zero cents. Now, if you are curious as to where this is getting stored, I can actually show you. So if we do slash data, get you can get the MBT data from a tile entity, a normal entity, or storage block. We're going to be doing entity. And I can go ahead and just type in my username. And you can see if I can find it. Okay. 
Oh wait, there's even more? Oh, it was all the way at the top. I spent like five minutes looking and it was the first one. As you can see here, it says template, template plugin because I misspelled template plugin when I made this template. But uh, yeah, you can see our money is stored right there. And if I do slash money D100, then I forgot to send a message. But if we check our data now, and we go to the very top, you can see we now have a hundred dollars. And whenever we reload the server, and we check again, if we go up, you can see that it is still there because this is all being saved in the NBT data on the server files. So it's all being saved in the player object. Anyways, guys, if this helped you out, let me know by leaving a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. And also, if you want more information about what I said earlier about putting other types of data types inside of the NBT data, check out down in the description. I'll have a link down there to some very complex classes. So maybe have a whack at it if you're feeling up to it. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Nice! The mutt's nuts, in fact.